Hi everybody, can I be here once more talking about zombie movies and TV shows. This episode we're going to talk about episode 9 of The Walking Dead. And what not to do like they did when you're trying to survive. Hi everybody, can I be here once more talking to you about zombie movies and TV shows. This episode we're going to talk about episode 9, season 2, Walking Dead. They fucked up so badly on this episode, and did things that nobody in their right mind should fucking do. So I'm going to tell, go break it apart for you, give you the valuable tips you need on how to survive the upcoming zombie apocalypse, and not be like these bag of douches. First off, the whole bar firefight. One. Rick, being a cop, should know about fields of fire and how to set up a proper ambush. Instead, they relied on Glenn to go and be a moron and throw his fucking body weight against the door, immediately alerting the bad guys to what the hell's going on. They're lucky that the bad guys were just as fucking retarded as them. Because it would have been me, I would have put two through the bottom of that door, I would have nailed Glenn. Then there would only have been two of them left. Herschel and Rick. In a situation like that, it would have been best to back away from the windows and doors. And instead, let the bad guys come in. They're beautifully framed in that doorway. Easy pickings. You just boom, boom, boom. And you got them. But instead, they opted for the retarded method of barricading the door, and that got them absolutely nowhere fast. Then, the next thing they fucked up, Glenn and Herschel going to the back. Glenn, instead of letting the guy step through the door once again, framing him beautifully, especially for a shotgun, he opts instead to do the retarded thing of fire without really seeing his target. Alerting the bad guys that, hey, we're coming out in the back now. So, once again, retarded move. Next, on the retarded list of moves, they go out, they get shot at, because they didn't go out in a tactical manner, not careful, not checking their corners, they just kind of blindly go out, being retarded. Then they end up getting nailed. Well, nearly getting nailed. Glenn shit his pants and fucking hit in a corner while Herschel tagged the guy who was shooting at them. Meanwhile, Rick is still on the, in the front door area. He's just slowly backing away right away. And, like I said, clearing the lane of fire making sure he has a nice clear spot to pick them off at. Waits till he hears nothing. Then he goes out the back. Check. At that point, all the walkers are showing up. The bad guys, once again, Rick and company have a chance to take these guys out. They let them go. In a situation like this, you can't risk it. Rick would have been smarter to put two rounds in the driver and deal with whoever else is in that vehicle. But instead, they let him go. Now, these guys are going to go back to wherever base camp they're operating out of, come back with a better armed party to fuck up their shit. That's right, the farm is probably going to fall apart now because Rick did not kill those guys. That leads me to the next point. You just shot this guy, you wounded him, now you're feeling bad because the zombies are about to eat him? Fuck that. He was shooting at you first. He's fucking zombie chow. Use that time to get the hell out of Dodge. 
Mr. Parkour? You should have left him with a spike in his leg. Or if you're going to take him, take him for interrogation purposes. But no, Rick being all of a sudden going from being a badass back to being a, a wussy is going to take this guy. And if you decide to keep him in your group, you know he's going to be worthless because, well, yes, he can climb up on buildings like a spider monkey. He's too stupid. Who the hell jumps off a building like that? Especially in that kind of environment. He went and did something stupid, got impaled, you should have left him there to die. But once again, Rick is going to go help this guy out. We all know where that's going to go. This is one of the few times I actually have to agree with Shane. Should have left him there for zombie jail. Because they're not going to get any information out of him. They're not going to torture him to find out where his buddies are, how many of them are there, what weapons they have, and etc. etc. Instead, they're going to be nice. They're going to patch him up, put him out on the, out on the road somewhere, and let him on his way. Which, they might not even do that because I'm sure that some of the groups are going to have second thoughts about it because they're very ill-equipped mentally on how to deal with the zombie apocalypse. So now, you're, not only are you wasting precious medical supplies on somebody that's not part of your group, you're now risking your group by putting this guy back on the road so he can find his friends and come back to you. This is proof that Rick might not be the best leader of the group. Unfortunately, Daryl doesn't want the leadership position, or I would vote for him. Daryl seems to have a lot more sense than both Rick and Shane. Which leads me to Daryl. Daryl is getting ready to walk away from the group at this point. You can see this coming. Gets an arrow in the gut. Then he has the blonde idiot shoot him. I think he's a little pissed off with these people, especially when Otis, Herschel's family, all had to know that little girl was inside the barn. So I don't blame Daryl for being a little pissed off about this right now. So instead, he's going to do the smart thing, hopefully, and leave the group and wander off on his own and hopefully survive. Now, one of the things that's been bugging me about The Walking Dead, and some friends of mine that over at the game store actually pointed out also, these people don't know how to fucking scavenge. That's right. They're wandering around to get over to CDC. There's weapons galore laying all over the damn place. They could have picked up a few AR-15s or M4s or whatever the hell they were and pieced together a few good working ones. They could have hooked up with a doctor that was there, talked to him and said, hey, look, you got ammunition you can spare us because we're going to be leaving? No, they, he didn't do that. Instead, they just blither along blindly, not picking up backpacks or anything of use. And instead, they just go and fucking steal stupid shit. I'm surprised they're not walking around with iPods and computers playing games. Nobody there has a sling. Nobody there, for the most part, really has that. I think maybe Rick and Shane have holsters. The rest of them are just picking their pistols in wherever and being fucking stupid. But, once again, I still give Walking Dead three and a half out of five katanas. And hopefully, you know, they accept my application. I, I keep a to be on the Talking Dead show so I can set these people straight and tell them exactly what they're doing wrong in terms of like how zombie survivors should actually act and how necro dynamics actually are because once again they're still doing now I haven't gotten this prop finished yet you needed a head for a zombie so I went and got my hands on one of these her Lori in this last episode stabs the zombie in the eye, kills it. But as you can see, stabbing right there, it's not the brain stem. This is the area you gotta damage. Right back here, folks. 
stab it in the eye socket, but just a screwdriver isn't going to cut it. You need to stab and twist, rotate, work it, work it in there. Turn that brain stem into sushi. That's how you're going to kill these things. I'm going to give another uh, little tip uh, this week about uh, zombie survival. Include some other weapons, but I wanted to break this out early because, as like I said, new toy. So the other thing is, uh, some new th another thing I noticed on the uh, previews for next week, they're going to a prison. Prisons are a wonderful place to hold up, provided you can deal with all the inmates there. But I'll cover this further on the next episode. Till next time, this is Kenny B. Goodbye.